This conference will now be recorded. Very good evening, students. Today we'll be discussing few numerical problems on the magnetic effect of current. So this chapter is very very important for NEET or any other JE and other competitive exams. So there could be various type of problems in this particular chapter. So we'll discuss few numerical problems and conclude this chapter. And in the next class, we'll start other chapter, new chapters. Okay. So let us start our discussions. So <clears throat> the first problem states that a ring of radius R made of an insulating material carries a charge Q uniformly distributed on it. So a ring of radius R. So this is kind of a ring of radius R. Okay. Capital R. This is insulating, but insulating, but it has some charge Q on it. So charge Q on it. Insulating in the sense it is the charges are actually stationary charges, or they don't have free charges. Okay. Anyway, this ring. Of radius R has charge Q and this is made of insulating material. Insulating in the sense it cannot conduct the charge to the surrounding also. That means this charge is constant. That's what you can think of. If the ring is rotated or if the ring ring rotates about its axis passing through its center and normal to the plane of the ring with constant angular speed omega see this this is the ring suppose this ring is on the horizontal plane okay so the axis passing through it and perpendicular to it is this so this is the axis about which the ring rotates okay so this is axis about this ring rotates with a with a constant angular speed omega the magnitude of the magnetic moment in the ring of the ring is so you have to find out what you have to find out magnetic moment mu or m so magnetic moment you have to find out for the ring i'll just repeat the question so there is a ring of radius r this is made of insulating material but it has a constant charge capital Q and the ring is rotating about its axis passing through center and perpendicular to the plane of the ring and the angular speed with which the ring is rotating is omega so you have to find out what is the magnetic moment of the ring see this question can be found out if you remember if you remember the atomic magnetism we were discussing in, on the last day see if an electron is moving okay we have to think that this particular orbit is kind of a current loop so in this case also since the charge in this case the ring itself is moving then i could think that the charge is moving and charge is moving means what it will produce a current obviously and this ring itself could be thought of a current loop okay so here the ring 
can be considered as a <clears throat> current carrying loop okay current carrying loop so if this is a current carrying loop then how do we find out magnetic moment we know magnetic moment m is equal to or mu is equal to mu or m whatever like you can whatever you like you can use the symbol for magnetic moment so magnetic moment is equal to current in the loop into the area of the loop area of the loop here anyway the direction has not been asked or the direct neither the direction is given in which direction the ring is rotating whether clockwise and clockwise so we don't bother about the direction of the magnetic moment only the magnitude of the magnetic moment we have to find out so current into area of the loop okay <clears throat> so what is the current how do you find out current we know current can we find a uh, found out q by t q is the charge total charge this is constant charge since it is insulating it does not uh, lose any charge and t is the time period of revolution so this is time period of revolution period of revolution okay so look then i'll continue here so q is equal to, sorry i is equal to q by t t could be written in this way the total path length for one revolution that is 2 pi capital r that is the perimeter of the ring divided by v that is the linear velocity divided by linear velocity so this velocity v i am taking it to numerator okay or let me just write it here itself for the first time okay so 2 pi r by v this is actually t t is the time period of revolution so this is the linear speed linear speed okay all right so this see we can just take q v by 2 pi r then see v is not given what is given is angular speed so i'll just convert this into angular speed v is equal to r into omega i'll write that here r into omega okay so this see this r this r can cancel each other now see what i have to do i have to find out magnetic moment so magnetic moment m is equal to i i you have already found out q omega by 2 pi into pi r square this is the area of the loop okay so pi pi goes off so what we get half q omega into r square so you should not get nervous to see the question after just after seeing the question you should not get a nervous you just you just try to try to recall what you have done for a current loop to find out magnetic moment especially for the for, for the atomic magnetism so in that way you have to solve this problem so answer will be half half q omega r square so option b will be the correct answer in this problem okay so we'll move on to the next problem so this problem says a proton which okay so this which has kinetic energy which has kinetic energy one mega electron volt kinetic energy one mega electron volt okay moves from south to north 
it gets an acceleration 10 to the power 12 meter per second square by an applied magnetic field OS to it. Find the value of the magnetic field. I'll just uh, I'll just make you understand the problem itself first. See the proton. Okay, so sorry. See <clears throat> the proton which has kinetic energy one mega electron volt moves from south to south to north so the proton is moving that means the velocity of the proton is in this direction okay and it gets an acceleration of 10 to the power 12 meter per second square by an applied magnetic field os to east that means magnetic field is applied in this way so b is given b is given <clears throat> i'm sorry acceleration is given you have to find out magnetic field so these are perpendicular to each other right so when a charged particle we know when a charged particle particle enters into a region into a region of magnetic field uniform magnetic field such that <clears throat> b is perpendicular to v then the then the charged particle particle will undergo undergo a circular motion right circular motion so this is one point so this anyway i don't think this concept will be coming into picture here so this thing is very clear that the magnetic force on the charge particle will be maximum and that magnetic force is q b b sine 90 degree okay so this 90 degree is equal to one so we get the force on the proton as this okay a b is q v b so now the acceleration is given right acceleration is given so since this concept is not coming in in use in this problem so i'll just just erase this point only thing is this portion that b is perpendicular to b here that we have understood now <clears throat> see <clears throat> acceleration excuse me <clears throat> acceleration on the charge particle is given so I can write this AB is equal to M into acceleration that is equal to Q V V. So what we have to find out, we have to find out the magnitude of the magnetic field. So B can be written as M into A by Q into V. So this is what we have to do. So now we'll just do the calculation. See kinetic energy is given and rest mass of the proton is given. What is rest mass? Rest mass means, see, when if, if a particle is moving with relativistic velocity, that means velocity nearly or comparable to C, speed of light in vacuum, then its mass will no longer be a constant, it will increase, okay? 
so when the charge particle or anything at rest that is actually its real mass we take so here since the charge particle is moving with one mega electron volt so it is actually see its mass uh, its velocity is really very very high so anyway but still it is not comparable to the um, i think it is it is nearly comparable anyway so but the rest mass is given so which we have to actually use here so mass of the proton is given here so we know kinetic energy is half m v square right so i need to find out what is v so this is given as one mega electron volt so mega electron volt can be written as 10 to the power 6 electron volt and this electron volt can be converted into joule by just multiplied by multiplying 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so this is actually in joule now okay so here mass mass will be in kg this will be meter per second okay so from here we can find out the v see we'll just try to get first v square so it will be 2 into 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power uh, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and m is given as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27 27 so this will get cancelled see here if this 27 goes this is 19 so goes in the numerator so it will be 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 10 to the power 8 actually 10 to the power 8 it will be okay so v will be actually root 2 into 10 to the power 7 meter per second so we have got v now if we put this value here put this value here put this value v here and m see acceleration is given already okay so m is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 27 right and this acceleration is 10 to the power 12 meter per second square q is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and v is obtained as this root 2 into 10 to the power 7 look now this if if it goes there then it will make 10 to the power minus 8 10 to the power minus 8 here and see this 7 will go in the numerator then it will make 10 to the power uh, 15 this will be 10 to the power minus 15 we'll just remove this we'll remove this also because this is the thing now look this see what we are getting 1 over root 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 okay so if we multiply root 2 here so it will be 2 10 to the power minus 3 this will be obviously in tesla because i have used si unit for all of them so this will be tesla see look this is actually 1.41 I'm taking 414 it is so this is the thing then the minus t okay so see this I have to divide this with 2 so this will be 0.7 so 14 okay so this will come like this and again 0 if we put then we will get this so this will be 5 so actually it will be nearly nearly 0 0.71 okay so and you look here 10 to the power minus 3 tesla so it is actually this is into 10 to the power so what we are getting what we are getting look if okay this is actually 
we have got 0.71 if we put this 0.71 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 3 tesla which is actually 0.71 milli tesla 0.71 milli tesla okay 0.71 milli tesla so this is the answer then option b is the answer for this question okay now we'll move on to the next problem okay so this problem says the figure shows a region of length l with a uniform magnetic field 0.3 tesla in it so you look this region this is actually of length l and there is a uniform magnetic field you can see the magnetic field lines over here and it has value 0.3 tesla a proton entering in the region with the velocity velocity is given so here v is given 4 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second this is given with an angle 60 degree you can see with the magnetic field so this is it will just increase like this so this is 60 degree okay all right so theta is 60 degree if the proton complete if the proton complete 10 revolution by the time it crosses region l okay is close to close to how much meter okay that means you have to find out the length of the l so this is the question actually you have to find out the length of the region what what is the clue clue is given that the proton has entered with an angle 60 degree and velocity is given so if the proton completes 10 revolutions by the time it cross the region l then the dimension or length of this l will be how much where mass of the proton is given charge of the proton is given so in this case as i was discussing discussing in the previous problem that when magnetic field and the velocity of the charge particle is perpendicular then the charge particle will actually undergo a circular motion like this okay it will undergo a circular motion but if suppose the magnetic field like uh, the speed of the charge particle is making certain angle so here look this is the figure this is b and this is b let us draw a perpendicular as well okay so this is perpendicular direction so this is the velocity direction of the velocity of the proton this is 60 degree is given so i can have two components of the velocity if you remember we had discussed this earlier also this kind of problem like in the theory part so we'll have v parallel component so that will be see v into cos of 60 degree or it will be v by 2 right v by 2 and this side it will be v perpendicular v perpendicular and that will be root 3 by 2 into v because this will be sine 60 degree sine 60 degree is root 3 by 2 okay so i'll just write it down and i'll clean this portion so i'll write v parallel as v by 2 that means 2 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second and v perpendicular let us keep this 
uh, root 3 by 2 into 4 that means 2 root 2 uh, sorry 2 root 3 2 root 3 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second okay then i'll just clean this first so in this case one thing i'll just make you remember that perpendicular component will actually will be responsible for circular motion and v parallel will drag the particle in the forward direction in the direction of b so what will happen see here the perpendicular component of the velocity will try to make a circular motion but the parallel component will actually take or drag it away okay drag it in the forward direction so we will actually get a helical path for this okay as i have drawn here so you will get helical path for the particle or the proton okay so you will get a helical path so in the helix there are two things one is that there will be circular motion and by the time it completes the comp like full rotation or full revolution the v parallel will drag it in the forward direction so here we have to find out the length okay uh, i'm sorry we have to actually find out the length is yes, length length means you know they, there are 10 revolution it says 10 revolution okay so we know in the forward direction which is taking it to forward direction that is actually v parallel so if we want to find out the length l we have to multiply time period into parallel so this is constant velocity so vt is equal to length and obviously there are 10 revolution so 10 into v parallel into t so what is t how to find out t t is actually we know we have to come from here if you remember that is very fine mv square by r that is is equal to q v b q v b here this v is perpendicular component okay so anyway this is going off one so here we'll get v perpendicular is equal to q v r by m and now t is equal to 2 pi if r is the uh, radius of the circular like circular path just by this proton then 2 pi r by v v is q b r by m m i'll just multiply in the numerator so you will get 2 pi m by q b so it doesn't depend on like we don't have to use the perpendicular component of the velocity finally see then we have got 2 pi m by q b okay so time period we have got 2 pi m by q b so if we have to find out this length right so what we will do we will just put the values okay so length will be 10 into t okay 10 into t into v parallel okay so 10 is like this 2 into pi let it be like this m is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 time period what is the time period time period okay i'm just multiplying this 2 pi m itself 2 pi m by q b q is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and b b is given as 0.3 tesla okay so 2 pi m by 2 pi m by q b and here b parallel is actually 2 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second okay so now we have to do the uh, calculation so first of all let let me just uh, remove this point so there will be one 10 multiplied in the numerator 
okay so yeah so this <clears throat> let us first uh let me just mark uh, write this new mark uh, like uh, the powers will just adjust first okay so in the denominator this there is this okay so look this 10 to the power minus 19 if it goes in the numerator what it will be it will be 10 to the power 24 with this and it will subtract so it will be 10 to the power minus 3 here and 100 was there so it will be actually 10 to the power minus 1 okay 10 to the power minus 1 so what i'll write i'll write divided by 10 itself okay so this much is fine okay now look see we don't have calculator here so what you have to do we have to do some rough approximation uh, okay so this pi pi is generally taken as 3.14 so for the time being let us just see just strike this out take them almost equal and here also this part let this be nearly equal let this be nearly equal okay then what you get is nearly nearly 0.5 so nearly 0.5 so your answer will be answer will be actually nearly 0 0.5 sorry 0 0.4 nearly 0 0.4 0 0.4 so options are here see there is option nearly 0 0.4 this is the actually value so what is the length of this region the length of this region is 0.44 meter in this question since we have done a little bit rough approximation so we are not getting exactly 0.44 okay if you just type in the calculator and get the value so you will get exactly 0.44 maybe okay so this is how you have to solve this problem all right we'll just move on to the next problem so this problem is again uh related to problem uh related to the previous problem itself but in this case the answer uh, like question is being asked little different but parameters are almost the same see a beam of proton with velocity 4 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second enters a uniform magnetic field of 0 0.3 tesla at an angle 60 degree okay to the magnetic field find the pitch of the helix we have to now find the pitch of the helix actually we have to find out the same thing we have to find out the same thing same thing pitch of the helix see length and pitch of the helix is the same but in this case 10 will not be multiplied okay 10 will not be multiplied here okay there is a little difference here there were 10 revolutions to cross this length see other parameters are all same only this 10 revolutions so here pitch is actually v parallel into t so this will give you the pitch pitch is denoted by p i'm not actually doing the whole thing very detailed so see parallel uh, component you know you will get actually v by 2 so it is 2 into 10 to the power 5 20 to the power 5 right and t will get 2 pi m 2 pi m by q b q into b so this is uh, v parallel let us like like this now so we have to find out what is t 2 pi m by b we have to find out this and multiply with this so 2 pi m 2 pi s we are keeping see this is 0.3 m is 1.6 into 10 to the power there is qb okay 6 7 into 10 to the power minus 27 and this is q is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so see here also the calculation will be approximated calculation so 
2 into this 10 I'll multiply here then 5 and this I'll just strike out in the beginning itself okay so this will be 10 to the minus 8 10 to the minus 8 divided by 3 so this time we will get this so it is nearly around 20 nearly around 20 into 10 to the power 8 sorry minus 8 it is actually uh, in time second okay so we have to find out v parallel into this okay so p is equal to v parallel v parallel into this t v parallel is how much v parallel will be v cos theta right so it will be 2 into 10 to the power 5 into this into 10 to the power minus 8 this is in meter again so this will give you 10 to the power minus 3 this is 40 it will be approximated because i have just dragged this out okay so 40 into 10 to the power minus 3 40 into 10 to the power minus 3 this is actually in millimeter then if i make it if i multiply sorry this is in meter I have to make it in centimeter because the answer is in centimeter. So this is in meter. So it will be four centimeter then. Because I will multiply hundred to make it centimeter. So it will be four around four centimeter. That means four point three five centimeter will be the answer. Okay. So these are actually approximated answer. Okay, so we have to sometime guess the answer from our approximated calculations. Okay, anyway, this is actually four. You see, others are two, five, six, so they have a difference than four. Okay, so all right, we'll go to the next problem. This is related to galvanometer. In the last class, we have discussed galvanometer problem. So today, we'll just conclude this session with this galvanometer problem okay so galvanometer has coil resistance 100 ohm galvanometer has resistance 100 ohm and gives a full scale deflection for 30 uh, 30 milliampere current see in the last class we had discussed that maximum deflection deflection whenever there is maximum deflection or full scale deflection this word will be there full full scale def, deflection full scale deflection these words will be there you have to consider that this is the ig that means this is the maximal maximum allowed current this is the maximum allowed current to the galvanometer. So this is the galvanometer current. So 30, see IG is here actually 30 milliampere. If it work, sorry, if it is to work as a voltmeter of range, 30 volt range, that means what? The resistance required. So that means this galvanometer we are going to use as a voltmeter and the terminal voltage is being is been given here as 30 volt that means see we know we have to what what we have to do here we have to recollect how we can use a galvanometer as a voltmeter we add a large re resistance or high resistance along with the galvanometer in series okay and then that the total thing we will use as voltmeter okay so the voltage across both will be actually the range given here so this is the voltage range 
let me write this as v and this is the range actually okay this is the range itself this is the range of the voltage okay so this you have to understand i'm sorry so what is the range of the voltage is given that is given as 30 volt so what we have to do here we have to see the current what is passing through the galvanometer is ig alone so we know ig whole into g g is the galvanometer resistance resistance and r is the additional resistance which we have to connect in series with the galvanometer this will give you the 30 volt here okay or v here v um, i have written the range of the voltage to be v so let me write as v so we have to find out what we have to find out the range so uh, sorry uh, resistance so we have to find out the resistance so what you have to do r is equal to c first of all i'll just take this to this side by ig then i have to subtract okay so this value will be v by ig minus g and what is v v is 30 volt what is ig 30 milliampere so 30 into 10 to the power minus 3 and minus g g is the volt uh, resistance of the galvanometer here this is 100 so now look what we are getting this will be in ohm so look this uh, this 30 this 30 will cancel each other so it will be 1000 minus 100 ohm so this will be 900 ohm so this was so simple so So this is how you have to apply the concept of galvanometer, apply the concept of cyclotron problem, or apply the concept of magnetic atomic magnetism, etc., to solve various type of problems. Okay. So I'll stop it here for today. So these were all actually from previous years questions, either board from the board paper or from J advance and mains okay so we'll stop it here for today in the next class we'll take up magnetic induction or before that there is magnetism in matter okay we'll just take up magnetism in matter magnetism in matter or and matter materials okay so anyway so this will take so there we'll be discussing bar magnetism okay bar magnet bar magnet is equivalent to solenoid okay how solenoid create solenoid how solenoid creates a magnetic field okay then we'll be discussing their various type of magnetic materials like para paramagnetic then ferromagnetic what are their characteristics like what are the parameters to identify materials okay how to find out like what will be the susceptibility or relative permeability etc and diamagnet okay and their uses like how ferromagnetic is being used and obviously we'll be discussing yeah, very important topic that is magnetic hysteresis loop okay so magnetic hysteresis loop we'll be discussing in the next class okay and wh what type of magnetic hysteresis loop will be obtained for soft magnet hard magnet and wh where are the use of uses of soft magnet and hard magnet etc in the next class okay so thank you for your presence. Bye for today.